Hi everyone, this is Sean and welcome back to my channel. Press the like button, subscribe, share, comment. I'm always looking for the dialogue. I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much for making my channel grow. In today's video, we are gonna be discussing whether or not as a private security officer, are you able to arrest someone? Are you able to make a private person's arrest if somebody has illegal narcotics on them? And if so, is this something that you should be doing that you ought to be doing as a private security professional. Before we begin, let's discuss where I am located. I'm in California. Because I'm in, because I'm in, I'm sorry. Because I'm in California, my understanding of laws tend to gravitate towards California. I'm not an attorney. This is not legal or professional advice. If you're located in another state, which you probably are, you're probably wondering, Sean, the Californian, what can you tell me about my state? Guys, your state laws are probably very similar to California laws. I talked to quite a bit of people on this channel and it seems like just about in every case, the laws are almost the same. Every state tends to gravitate towards the model penal code. That's what it, exactly what it is. It's the model penal code. It's, it's the, the ideal penal code in each state. A lot, of, a lot of states, if not all of the states, tend to gravitate towards the model penal code. Now today we're gonna to be talking about narcotic possession. Again, the laws in each state are, are, are different. So generally, in order to make a private person's arrest as a private security officer or as a citizen, you have to observe the crime. You got to be the first-hand witness for less serious crimes. In California and other states, we call them misdemeanors. With more serious crimes, all you have to do is prove that there was in fact a crime committed, a felony crime committed, and you have reasonable grounds for believing that the person that you arrest has committed the offense. That's for felony types of offenses. So misdemeanor offenses, typically those types of crimes have to occur in your presence. So let's talk about narcotics now. If somebody is in possession of a legal narcotic and you observe this, technically, yes, you can make a private person's arrest in those states that allow you to make a private person's arrest for misdemeanors. You also have to make sure that being in possession of a legal narcotic is at least a misdemeanor. In, in California, um, possession these types of possession laws used to be felonies. Guys, even marijuana possession, just for personal use used to be a felony in California. California has de decriminalized a lot of their laws, <coughs> excuse me, and basically being in possession of an illegal narcotic is a, it's really a sight and release. It's, 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 it's a misdemeanor now. <coughs> Regardless though, if it's a misdemeanor, you can make that private person's arrest. Now this is the problem. And guys, if I keep sneezing, coughing, um, or taking these unusual pauses. Forgive me, I've been sick for the last six weeks. I can't, I can't control my, my, my coughs, sniffles, or sneezes. So I, I apologize in advance. But anyhow, um, for a private security officer, you have to have probable cause. Well, actually in California, they call it reason, reasonable cause, um, reasonable grounds. Other states, they might call it probable cause. But California, which it's the same thing, guys. Reasonable cause and probable cause, it's the same thing. You have to believe that this person is, is in possession of a legal narcotic. How do you know that this white substance, this off-white substance, is an actual narcotic? And this is where you're going to get in trouble with the law. And maybe false imprisonment. This white substance might not be what you think it is. Law enforcement officers have to go through extensive training. They go through the academy, they see narcotics. Sometimes the professors show up um, to the uh, academy with different narcotics. They're able to do, to do this because they have a court order um, to possess certain narcotics for these types of, of presentations. So, so usually what you'll have is a subject matter expert in narcotics They'll show you, hey, this is cocaine, this is methamphetamine, this is how it looks like, this is marijuana, this is how it smells like, 
this is the appearance, this is the texture. And you get you go through extensive training. And then after the police academy, there's also courses to take that will build on your expertise. What I'm trying to say is most of the time, private security officers, you're not you're not going through the same level of training. Maybe a one hour course, a half an hour course, a five hour course, but it's not the same level of training. Because you don't have the same level of training, if you make a private person's arrest for illegal narcotic possession, it could be a, a, lawful, a, a lawful arrest if the substance that you think is illegal and is a narcotic is not in fact a narcotic. So you gotta be really careful. By you attending the training, these types of training events, um, these courses, it just increases the chances of you identifying an actual controlled sus substance, a, nar a legal narcotic, okay? And with these courses that law enforcement officers take, they have additional training and experience. So they're driving around with sometimes a subject matter expert, sometimes a field training officer in the beginning of their career. They're identifying what they think is narcotics and then they're field testing it, guys. Private security officers are not usually out there taking narcotics off of somebody and then field testing it. And then after that, sending it to an official lab for confirmation. Security officers typically don't do that. The law enforcement officer over a course of period, they keep doing this and then they're gaining their expertise. If you're taking these substances off of these people, you don't even know for sure what this substance is because it's not going through the same protocol. It's not going through field tests. It's not going through the lab. So what expertise are you gathering or gaining? You're, you're not gaining any expertise. For that reason, I don't think it's a good idea for private security officers to make private persons arrest for somebody being in possession of, of an of illegal narcotic. It's a, a bad idea. And also this, when you're out there and you're and you're you're seizing these items, you're taking away these items, you're confiscating these narcotics, it is very dangerous. Right now we have we we have um, <coughs> we have a narcotic pandemic, guys. Um, geez, I can't think right now. What's that drug that's out there? Everybody's dying. You take one, <coughs> excuse me, you take one whiff of it and that's a potential fatal dose. I, I can't think of it right now. I, I should know, but I, I, I just can't remember right now. Um, it, you don't know what you're dealing with is, is my point. If if you handle this substance, you could die right on the spot fast, okay? Um, you might not know what certain substances are um, based on the smell, and it can be dangerous for you guys. When I started my law enforcement career in 2002, that's, it wasn't really the PCP epi um, epidemic, but there was some PCP out there. I was exposed to PCP and I got a contact high. Um, it's it's just something that, it, you, you don't wanna get sick guys. I mean, a contact high for PCP, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a good situation guys. I haven't seen PCP in, in years. I've probably only seen it three times in my career. I started in 2002 law enforcement, private security in 1998. Um, I think the PCP epidemic was a lot before then, but uh, again, in my career, maybe two times, maybe three times. PCP will smell like, it'll smell like an either smell, um, kind of like nail polish. Heroin tends to smell like, a, it has a vinegar smell to it. And methamphetamines, when it's smoked, um, it kind of smells a little bit chemically. But the, the thing is this, if this information is new to you, then we have a problem if you're out there making private persons arrest for somebody with illegal narcotic possession. You don't know how to identify these substances. Because of that, you can have contact high, you can get exposed to it. it it's, it's, it's not a good thing. Guys, my brain is just, it's, my mind is just going crazy right now. Because, oh, fentanyl. Fentanyl, that's the substance right now. That is hot on the market. I have seen so many people dying in the streets 
Um, a lot of people have passed away um, due to an overdose. We find out later it's fentanyl. Fentanyl is it's just out of control right now. I don't want you guys out there thinking that you're you're getting maybe ecstasy off of somebody and making a private person arrest when in fact it's fentanyl. Um, that it just you can get a contact high and and even die if you're in possession of fentanyl. Is it worth it to make your private person's arrest? I, I just don't think so. Now there might be some apartment complexes. Maybe those of you who are in maybe Michigan area. Uh, Minneapolis, Chicago, these hint these Democrat controlled cities. Scratch that. I didn't say I didn't say that. <laughs> but you guys get the point here. Um anyhow, you might work at a car apartment complex where they want you to enforce narcotic um possession, narcotic sales. Guys, I get that. You get rid of the narcotics, you can get rid of the violent activity. I work for a security company and we had a security officer that was arresting people for drug sales um, and narcotic possessions. You probably, some of you are flipping out right now, like what the hell? He had expertise. He had four years of being a Los Angeles police officer. Um, this this security officer mentored me in private security. Before you guys make that prejudgment, um, <laughs> he had the experience. Going back in time, I don't think that we should have been doing that. It was perfectly legal to do so, but I just don't think we should do that. We don't have the same resource. This security officer didn't have the same resources than when he was employed with the Los Angeles Police Department. He didn't have the field test kits. Um, he didn't have access to a Department of Justice lab where he's able to <coughs> test out his experiences. Was this narcotic that he possessed, was it in fact an, an illegal narcotic? Was it in fact a controlled substance? He cleaned up these apartment complexes, but again, it's just a bad idea because one of these days you're gonna make these false arrests, guys. And for law enforcement, you're able to make a bad arrest as long as it's done in good faith. There usually is no good faith exemption for private security officers, absolutely none. Some of you are probably saying, well, that's a bunch of bull. Why does law enforcement have a good faith exemption and not security? The reason for that is because it gives officers, police officers, a little bit more confidence to make proactive arrests, to go out there and make arrests. That's, that's, one, that's one of many reasons that they're able to have that good faith exemption. If they did not have a good faith exemption, they will not go out there um, and take these small risks. Um, they're not going to make an arrest when they, when it's, when it's actually required, especially for domestic violence cases and violent crime cases. Um, if they know that they're going to be liable, okay, if they make, even if they make a good faith arrest, they're not going to make any arrest at all. This is a public policy concern going a little bit off topic, just in case some of you are wondering, but I'm going to repeat, I'm going to repeat what 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 the take of this of this video is so number one you can in most circumstances make a private person's arrest for illegal narcotic possession remember if it's a misdemeanor you have to observe the crime occurring in your presence meaning that you have to observe this person with the narcotic um, with a felony some states um, some states allow well, most states allow you to make a felony arrest as long as you have probable cause or reasonable grounds for believing that this particular person that you're arresting committed the offense, committed the said offense, committed the felony. Okay, you can. I'm going to say it's a bad idea, it's a horrible idea for a security officer to make possession arrest because they don't have the same level in most circumstances unless you're a former police officer, retired police officer, you don't have similar um, or the same training and experience and access to to a laboratory okay you don't have the same training experience in a police officer and you don't have access to the lab laboratories it's not a good idea last reason why it's not a good idea to make unlawful controlled substance arrest is because <laughs> i'm going blank guys I worked the 12-hour shift graveyard last night. What was I going to say? 
<laughs> because it's dangerous. <laughs> Because a narcotic that you might be possessing is dangerous. You might get a contact tie that might kill you. Not a good idea. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you guys, at your security company, do you make, even your private investigations company, do you guys make private persons arrest for illegal narcotic possession or even sales? Is this something that, that you do? And what do you do as a private security officer if you encounter a narcotic? What do you do? We're all interested in hearing your perspective and your experience. You guys take care.